Alright, hey guys, here's my part one guide to playing Sonic. For this part one, I wanted to go over something that I believe is a big barrier for people that are interested in playing Sonic, and that's the difference between down B and side B. Um, so I just wanted to start off with something super basic so um, anyone could really get into playing Sonic if they wanted to. It can be confusing because down B and side B look virtually the same, but I'll tell you guys what the key differences are. So I'm just going to hop into training. I'll pick a random stage like uh, this one. Um, and while this is loading, I'll probably show a screenshot of what my control scheme is. I highly recommend you guys just copy that just for this example. And if you guys actually like that control scheme, you can stick with it. So I'm just going to pick Sonic here. I'll uh, pick someone random like this guy right here. Alright, so right off the bat, instead of calling it down B and side B, I'll show you what their actual names are. So if I just pause and go into press the Z button to see the move list, you can see that Sonic's side B is called spin dash, and his down B is called spin charge. I'll probably call it side B and down B anyway, but just so you guys know their formal names, that's what they are. Alright, so now I'm just going to go over the super basics of Sonic's down B, or his spin charge. So if you crouch down with the left stick and press the B button once, you'll notice Sonic revs up in a ball. And if you let go of the left stick and the B button while he's revved up, you'll notice Sonic does a relatively slow and relatively weak spin charge. But, as the name implies, you can rev it up by mashing the B button. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. So I'm going to press the B button a few more times and then release. You'll notice it turns into a multi-hit and does way more damage and comes across the stage faster when you rev it up more. So um, if you rev it up all the way, Sonic glows yellow, as you can see there. So yeah, when the yellow glow comes up, that means the spin charge is fully charged and that's when it'll come out the fastest do the most damage and get the most multi-hit connections so I'll show you guys what that looks like so as you can see that connected way more hits it did 20% damage and came out way faster as compared to if you just pressed it once so that's the super basics of Sonic's spin charge or his down B I'll show you guys how to combo out of it now Alright, so now I'm going to talk about how to combo out of Sonic's down B or his spin charge. And the way you do that is by jumping out of the spin charge while you're hitting the opponent. Because um, when you jump out of the spin charge, you're still in your ball form and you're a hitbox. And you basically knock them up in the air with you. And from that point, you can do an aerial, you can do a homing attack. There's a lot of creative freedom to what you can do. So I'll show you an example right here. So I'm going to do a fully charged spin charge and I'll jump up and you'll notice Mario gets knocked up in the air with me. So you see I jumped out of the spin charge and Mario got knocked up into the air. And from that point you can do like a forward air. Like that. You could even do a, a homing attack. When you do the homing attack you can basically just mash the B button once you're in the multi hit and let go of the left stick and you'll just do a homing attack another thing to keep in mind is that when you're on the ground with the spin charge and you jump out of it and do a forward air you still have your double jump so you could even follow up with a whoops you could even follow up with a second forward air if you want and you can spring and still continue the pressure you can do a homing attack like I said there's a lot of creative freedom with how you combo out of um, Sonic's down B or spin charge. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys what happens if your opponent blocks your down B or your spin charge. So if you do an uncharged down B, you'll see you get stopped right in front of your opponent's shield and you'll get massively punished for it. If you do a fully charged down B, you'll see that you go straight past your opponent's shield, so it's a lot safer. I basically recommend that if you're going to go for a down B or a spin charge at all, 
basically just rev it all the way. It only takes like one second, if even that. Um, so it's a lot quicker to do, it's a lot safer, and it does a lot more damage. If you ever find yourself in the situation where you started to rev up a spin charge, but realize you don't want to dedicate to that move anymore, there's no worries because all you literally have to do is just keep your left stick held down uh, with your thumb, but just stop mashing the B button. So like I'll rev this up and then I'll just stop mashing B and you'll slowly come to a stop. That's just one of the ways you can stop yourself from going. You can also jump out of it. Um, basically by, again, keeping your left stick held down, stopping the mash, the B button mash, and just pressing the jump button, X or Y. Uh, I personally have my left bumper mapped to jump, so I can mash and then just press the left bumper. I can jump out of it. And from that, you can have mix-ups too, like you can act like you're going to go for a spin charge, jump, fake him out, homing attack. There's a bunch of freedom and a bunch of options from your spin, spin charge. You can even approach them and just jump right over them if you don't want to deal with them blocking it or them trying to hit you out of it. There's a lot of options with things you can do. You can go over them, fake them out, do a homing attack from behind. So yeah, a lot of offensive capabilities with his spin charge even though shield cancel was removed from Smash 4 so I personally don't think there's any worries there. In fact, I think it makes him more fun to play and less less campy. Um, but yeah, that's if you want to not dedicate to a spin charge. You have a bunch of options there. Alright, so one of the advanced techniques with Sonic's spin charge is being able to immediately send Sonic into an arc like this. And you can also attack out of it. You can also double jump out of it, which is super nice. Um, this isn't to be confused with the spin shot, which is exclusive to Sonic's side B, or his spin dash. I'm not sure if this technique has any sort of special name, so for now I'm just going to call it the charge shot, because you use spin charge to do it. Um, and in order to do it, you need to have your C stick set to tilt attack. Um, so what you do is you fully rev up your spin charge and then right when you finish mashing uh, the B button, quickly take your thumb off the B button and flick your C stick downwards like this. So if you quickly stop mashing the B button and immediately flick the C stick downwards, you should be able to go in a nice, nice arc. You don't even have to fully charge your spin charge in order to be able to do this. But yeah, you're going a nice arc and you can kind of influence the angle of that arc with your left stick. For example, you can see I just kind of fast fell it and went way down. And I can still recover because it doesn't consume your second jump if you do it. So that's a super helpful tip for edge guarding going out there far and quickly you can usually recover as compared to just jumping off and forward airing you see I don't get a, a lot of horizontal distance but if I do that charge shot I can go way out there relatively quickly and still recover because it does not use one of my double jumps so yeah I would definitely recommend learning this and trying to implement it into your play it can catch a lot of people off guard and you can really influence the angle that your arc goes. It'll take a while to get used to but it's really worth it. I've gotten a lot of kills with a quick charge shot and then following with a forward air. I'll probably provi provide some example clips of me performing it in Elite Smash.
So they, yeah, that's a pretty easy to perform advanced technique that I have found extremely useful. Also, during the charge shot and you're in your ball form and you're going in that arc, you are an active hitbox, so you can hit people and you can try and combo off of that. Another thing to keep in mind about the charge shot technique is that it only works when you're on the stage. If you try and do it off stage, it won't work. You'll just kind of hop up in place and it won't send you in that arc. Like I'm flicking the C stick and it's not working. Again, it only works when you're on stage. Alright, so another advanced technique that I like to do with Sonic's spin charge is what I'll call the charge jump because I'm not sure if it has an official name. Um, but what it is, is you basically rev up Sonic's spin charge and you just jump straight out of it. And if you do it correctly, it'll look like this. And you'll notice that Sonic remains in his ball form while in the air. And he is an active hitbox during this. So you can hit people that are above you with it. You can also influence its direction with the left stick a little bit, left or right. And for a clearer instruction on how to do it, you basically hold down the left stick and then you rev up your spin charge by mashing the B button. Keeping your left stick held down, you stop mashing the B button and immediately press the Y or X button to jump. You can also map your left bumper to jump if you want to, to make things a little bit a little bit easier, but it should be somewhat easy either way. So I'm gonna rev up my spin charge, keeping my left stick held down, and then I'm gonna immediately stop mashing and press the jump button. So rev up, jump. Rev up, stop mashing, jump. And then after you've gotten in the air, that's when you can move the left stick left or right in order to influence its direction. And I'll show you an example of it being able to hit people that are above you. So I'm just going to up throw Mario and then hit him with this charge jump. So I'm going to up throw, rev, jump. So yeah, he's in his ball form and he can hit people. You can even try and combo off of it because you can influence its direction a little bit. So I'll do up throw, rev up, jump, forward air. So it's extremely useful and it's fast and can catch people off guard. Another thing to keep in mind about this technique is that it'll only work when you're on stage. If you are off stage and you try and do it, you'll exit the ball form and you'll just jump straight up in the air. So yeah, if you're off stage, it won't have its intended effect, so it only works on stage. Alright, so now that you guys know about Sonic's down B or his spin charge, I'm going to teach you guys about Sonic's side B otherwise known as his spin dash. So I'm just going to do a regular uncharged spin dash. And you can see the biggest difference right off the bat is that it's a singular hit as compared to Sonic's down B, which is a multi-hit. So if I do a fully charged side B, you'll notice that when I'm fully charged, I glow yellow and I go across the stage way faster and it does more damage. So that's a fully charged side B. Uh, another very big key difference with side B is that right at the start of side B, you'll notice Sonic does a little hop right at the start of his side B. And right at the start of that hop animation, Sonic has iframes, and what that basically means is that there's a small window of time that he's invulnerable. And he can phase through projectiles such as Link's arrow and Samus's fully charged shot. So I'll provide sample clips of that. So yeah, mastering the timing of that invulnerability on the hop of the, the beginning of a side B is pretty hard, but it's very useful to get past projectiles. 
Uh, another thing with Sonic Side B is that once you are charging it, you can jump and it'll maintain your Side B charge. So I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to charge my Side B, jump, and you can see it maintained my Side B charge throughout my jump. It does not do that for his down B. You can see I'm going to down B, jump, down B, and I have to restart the charge. So for Sonic Side B, it can maintain his charge, and you can jump up to two times before it will automatically release his Side B. Alright, so now I'm going to show you guys how to combo out of Sonic's Side B, and it's basically the exact same as comboing out of Sonic's Down B, because when you connect the Side B and jump, you'll notice it knocks them up in the air, just like how it does when you Down B and jump. So from there, you can just connect an aerial. Like forward air, neutral air, you have a ton of options with what you can do. So yeah, it's fairly similar to comboing out of Sonic's down B. You can even sometimes get a, uh, let's see if I can do it. You can even sometimes get a back air because it's a singular hit, just like that. So you'll go past them way faster. And you can sometimes come up behind them and just sneak a back air in there, which is super good. Alright, so if you find yourself in the situation where you started charging up your side B, but you decided you don't want to dedicate to the move anymore, uh, it's a little bit harder to stop yourself than your down B because, uh, like I said, when you jump with your side B, it reserves your charge. So, uh, the best way I've found to stop uh, is just to, it's a little bit hard, is just to jump up with your charge side B, let the side B go, and then immediately use your double jump. So I'm going to try and show what that looks like. So say you got your fully charged side B, and then I just let the side B go and I jumped, and it stopped me right in my tracks. I'll try and do it again. I try to do it, the input's a little bit slower so you can really see what's going on there. Side B, jump, let go, jump. So if you, if you do it quick, I'm going to try and do it quick here. Let's see what that looks like. You can see it stops you pretty fast. You can also just down air. Down air will stop all your momentum, but be careful because down air has a lot of landing lag, so you can get punished for that. So make sure you're a, a safe distance away from your opponent if you decide to do that. You can also spring out of it and then fast fall back to the ground. You have a bunch of options to stop your your side B, so it's not the end of the world if you started one and you realize you don't want to do it anymore. And you can always just jump right over your opponent if you're not feeling like making contact with them. Alright, so I'm going to cover the first advanced technique that uses Sonic Side B or a Spin Dash, and that is the Spin Shot. And this is what the Spin Shot looks like. It's really hard to do, so I'm going to try and not mess it up. Alright, that's the Spin Shot and it sends you in that horizontal arc um, and the way you do it is by charging up your side B and then right before Sonic turns yellow from a fully charged side B you want to flick the C stick down and you should enter a spin shot so I'm going to try it again here there's a spin shot if, if you do the spin shot incorrectly it'll look like this It'll kind of have a bunch of different things wrong. You won't go in that horizontal arc. So yeah, the timing is super strict and hard, so don't get discouraged if it takes you a while to get used to it. Uh, another thing to know is that you have to have your double jump in order to spin shot. And the spin shot consumes your double jump, so you cannot double jump out of a spin shot. So I'm mashing jump and I can't do it because the spin shot consumes your double jump. Uh, the primary uses for spin shot that I, I can think of is if you're edge guarding your opponent and you want to go out there and send out a forward air. But uh, my preference is to use the charge shot technique that I talked about earlier because you can go way further out and it you still have your double jump. So in my opinion, I feel like the spin shot is way more useful when you're trying to return back to the stage 
or if you're, you know, stuck on the ledge here and you're getting edge guarded and you're having a hard time getting back on the stage, you can jump up and spin shot right back onto the stage and past your opponent. Uh, the spin shot I can also see being super useful for getting snapping back onto the ledge super quickly. So you can see I just did a spin shot to really quickly get back onto that ledge. But be careful though because if you've used your double jump and you side B off stage, you cannot act out of it and this will happen. So double jump, side B. You cannot jump out of it, you cannot spring out of it. You will end up SDing, so be super careful of that. Alright, so another advanced technique with Sonic's side B is um, being able to turn yourself around mid-air and going for a back air. So what I mean by this is that in this example I'm facing left off the stage and if I jump off the stage I cannot do a back air because I can't turn around mid-air. Using this side B pivot technique, I'll just call it that for now because I don't know if it has an official name. So side B pivot. So using this side B pivot technique, you can turn yourself around midair and do a back air, even if you jumped off facing left in this specific example. So I'm going to show you what the inputs are really slowly. So you just jump off, side B to the right, double jump, back air. So that's what it looks like when you do the inputs really slowly. If you do it quickly, it'll look like this. You see that I quickly side B to the right to turn myself around, and then I use my double jump to jump out of it and do a back air. There it is again. So you can jump off and go really low to the stage and turn around and do a quick back air. It can also apply if you jump off backwards and want to do a forward air. So you can jump off backwards, side B to the left, double jump, and forward air. Keep in mind this, this technique can only be performed if you have your double jump. If you don't have your double jump and you side B off the stage, you will not be able to act out of it and recover. So be wary of that. So another thing to be aware of with Sonic's down B and side B, something you guys need to be super careful about, is that... If you are in your rolling of the down B or side B and you touch the ground, it does not reset your double jump or it does not reset your jumps. So if I double jump and down B and roll off the stage like this, I cannot act out of it. I'm stuck. I can't act out of it until super late and it's basically too late to recover. So I'll show you again. I'll do side B. So I'm going to double jump, side B, and I accidentally roll off the stage. I can't act out of it. So you'd be super careful of that. So if you end up double jumping and like side B, you can jump if you're still on the stage and recover and save yourself. So if you see yourself rolling off and you've already used your double jump, you can go ahead and jump if you are already on the stage and that will save you. So be careful not to roll off because it does not reset your double jumps if you touch the ground and you're in your rolling state. Alright guys, that's going to conclude it for part one of my Sonic Guide, which was the differences between down B and side B, and some of the special techniques that you can pull off with those moves. I hope this was helpful and you guys were able to learn something. Uh, if I missed out on anything and uh, got information wrong, please let me know down in the comments below. I could learn from it and the people watching this video could learn from it. So um, thank you guys so much for watching and I plan to upload more parts to the Sonic Guide soon where I'll talk about things like uh, tips on how to recover with Sonic and tips on how to spike with Sonic and just anything like that. If there's anything you guys would specifically like to see uh, as well, just let me know down in the comments below. Alright guys, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.